Barbecued crickets. Well, yeah, that's delicious. Oh yeah. Good crunch. Mm-hmm. Good flavor, good crunch. Then it's lunchtime, so I'm kind of hungry anyway. <laughs> I'm probably gonna eat this whole bowl. This is really good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the wild, so there's no doubt I've probably swallowed a few bugs, but never intentionally until I met Chad and Claire Simons at Three Cricketeers in St. Louis Park. They produce about a thousand pounds of crickets per month with very little environmental impact. So why would somebody choose to raise insects for a living? Chad had studied alternative proteins as an environmental law student. And when his son came home with a cricket cookie on Earth Day, he was inspired. Chad thought it would be fun to raise crickets in their basement. But when he brought the idea to his wife, Claire, the first word she uttered was... Gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was really scared. I think the first time we were cooking them, we did have a few drinks in between, <laughs> and it was definitely an experience, and we've definitely improved, yeah. yeah. Claire is a nurse and passionate about nutrition. So when she learned that only two tablespoons of cricket powder have 15 grams of protein and are an excellent source of B12, iron, calcium, and prebiotic fiber, she hopped on the cricket train. Started sneaking it into everything we ate, and the boys loved it, and they jumped on board too, so. That's three cricketeers for our three boys. I love my hamburgers, you know, and I love my steak. Um, but I have reduced the amount of uh, beef I eat because I'm getting the nutrition I need from crickets and worms and, and I'm helping the world out, you know, environmentally. First operation was a setup underneath the counter in our laundry room in the basement. We had a couple 20 gallon totes filled with wet peat moss at the bottom, just a bottom layer. We built a terrarium down there where they could stay warm and they hatched the first time. So we thought, oh, we can do this. So we moved yeah. up to a 700 foot, square foot warehouse after that. It was definitely fun to be able to grow them and it was not that difficult. Three Cricketeers current facility is 3,500 square feet and holds five million crickets. Here we have adolescent crickets. You can see them growing in there. These are about uh, two weeks old. That's a ground up organic chicken feed in there. And then uh, we use these water bottles that people can use with chickens. We just put paper towel in there so they don't drown in the water when they crawl in there to get a drink. It just looks like they're hanging at the beach in there. They're hanging out in their condo. <laughs> So yeah, you can see below here we have a chipboard bottle partitions, and then that gives them a lot of surface area to crawl on, and then they uh, they like to be uh, covered by something because they like to hide. They like to hide, be in the dark, and together. So they don't try to get out of here, and they only jump six inches. So they really, they're happy. So right now I'm gonna take this off, and there's gonna be an egg pan underneath where they lay their eggs. Females can lay up to 100 eggs a day. Right here we have the incubator. So once we take these pie pans filled with uh, wet peat moss that have eggs in them, we put them in here. So what you see here are the little, what we call pinheads, the, the hatchlings, they just hatched. After the pinheads are about three days old, egg trays go into four by eight chipboard partitions and crickets are harvested after a month. First, they stop feedings to clear the insect's digestive tracts. All that poop is sold for plant food. Then, crickets are placed in a 50 degree Fahrenheit environment where they go into hibernation before they're frozen and transferred to a commercial kitchen. After they come in frozen, we boil them and then we dehydrate them in the dehydrator. We then mill them into a very fine powder, so it's just like flour, and we can make cookies with them. We make flavored roasted crickets with the whole cricket and other products that we're coming out with soon. I tried a molasses cookie that has five grams of protein and not a hint of cricket crunch or taste. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. 
He'll take every single one. Three Cricketeers sell some of their powder to food businesses. Chef Gustavo Romero owns Nixta Tortilleria in Minneapolis. He makes four to 5,000 tortillas a week using heirloom corn from Oaxaca and central Mexico where he grew up. Chef Gustavo and his staff prepare 180 to 200 takeout meals a week and add cricket powder to tortillas when customers ask for it. So we first started with the crickets. Uh, these ones, they come to me frozen from, uh, from the, uh, the cricket years. And all we do is we dry them, throw them in the oven, dehydrator, uh, until they're completely dry. Then we just put it in a, uh, in a food processor or in a grinder and the, until we pulverize it. Um, after that is pulverized, uh, we add uh, about a tablespoon of uh, cricket powder for a pound of dough, and then that's what the dough will look like. Um, it's kind of a little bit off color because the, um, the corn was white. Uh, and then after that, then we just press it, because we have to press it by hand so we don't contaminate uh, our machine, and then you end it up with a tortilla. It's a lot of people that are still afraid of, of trying crickets. Uh, I grew up eating them. It's just something that we eat as a, as a snack back home. And the more that I learn how good it is for you, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for, for people that like something else than meat to, as a source of protein. I think people are going to be super excited about it. Three Cricketeers also sells their products at farmers markets, specialty stores, and online to customers like Kaya Braj who's been eating insects since she was a student at the University of Minnesota, Duluth. That my professor actually brought in cricket cookies. Um, and I didn't even know that it was possible to eat insects before that. And I was a little bit hesitant the first time that I ate them. Um, and once I tried them and, and started learning more about how they're raised and, and all of the um, sustainability aspects of eating insects, I thought, why haven't I heard of this before? She reached out to insect eaters called entomophagists to learn how to forage for insects and prepare them. I have tried crickets was the first one, and then I tried mealworms. I love mealworms. Kaya went on to teach in Thailand where insect farming is a huge industry. I would go to the 7-Eleven and just like there's bags of chips by the checkout register, there were bags of crickets. They had barbecue flavor, sea salt flavor. Kaya now lives in St. Paul and forages for grasshoppers in her country friend's short grass fields that haven't been sprayed with pesticides. They are very tricky to catch sometimes. So sometimes the caloric output <laughs> when you're trying to catch them can be more than you're eating. Um, but I do it more for like the adventure of it. You really have to get up early to get out there because that's when they're a little bit slower. They're a little bit easier to catch. I don't use a net. I just use my hands. <laughs> they're just easier to catch that way. My favorite way to eat those is to first boil them um, to kind of cook them all the way through. And they turn this bright red like a lobster. It's so cool to watch. Sometimes I'll roast them after that and put them in the oven. Um, sometimes I'll coat them in seasoning. And usually the way I like to eat them is tacos. They're, they make a really mean taco. While I do love foraging for insects, it is a lot of work. <laughs> and so the solution that I came up with um, was this beautiful um, contraption right here. This is from a company called Live In Farms. So this is a growing system for mealworms. There are multiple bins, as you can see here, for different stages in the mealworm life cycle. Um, so a lot of people have, you know, if they can, they have backyard chickens and things like that. Well, I don't even have to have a backyard for this. I can just put this on my counter and I can grow my own protein. Kaya is a middle school science teacher and introduces students to insects at their level of getting past the ick factor. Mealworm banana bread is a starter food. The next level up is chocolate covered grasshoppers. Recently, over the course of the past three years, I mean, we've seen a huge upturn in interest and openness to the, uh, the eating insects in general. In fact, you know, a lot of people are seeking us out now, so it's really, really changed over the last three years. Over 80% of the world's cultures use insects in some way in their cuisine. They have known the secret, and us in the Western world, we're kind of just catching up to that.